Good morning and welcome to worship on this Holy Trinity Sunday. Um, we will have hymns that reflect our celebration of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as well as readings, but also on this day we are joining uh, with churches across our ELCA denomination, uh, sharing in some service materials that were provided by our churchwide that we all might uh, worship in unity on this day using some of the same words and materials. So you'll notice some additions, uh, some different language perhaps than we are used to regularly in the worship uh, service. So please know then that we are, um, although our worship patterns are united across the board as it is, um, Today, maybe even more so than usual. The LCA also had provided a sermon by our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton. And uh, for some technical uh, reasons, we will be sharing her sermon on Facebook or other ways um, after the service. And I will go ahead and preach a sermon. So. Um, the flowers today are uh, provided for us by Amy and Chris St uh, Strain, and um, they are celebrating their wedding anniversary. So we congratulate them on uh, their partnership and what it does for um, their family and for the community, and uh, thank them for the flowers in the church today. With that, then I invite you to join me in confession and forgiveness. We're gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God who is faithful and just, and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our full heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin, and so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. Amen. With joy, I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sins and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We join together in holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty.
before we continue with the prayer of the day, I wanted to add um, just a brief statement for myself uh, to confess that I was a little behind the curve last week when I came back into town, traveling sometimes in places or circumstances that kept me a lot um, dis more disconnected than usual from the rest of the world. And so last Sunday, I really didn't yet have words to offer about the senseless killing of George Floyd or the undeniable realities of racism and injustice in our nation. And so I am relying on that confession we just made together at the beginning of worship. I rely on the promise that God forgives me for what I have left undone, or in this case, what I may last week have left unsaid. And uh, But that confession of forgiveness is empty if I don't make an effort to do better, to not leave the hard work for justice undone, to not leave difficult words of truth unsaid. And I'm hoping today with our joining in with the ELCA um, in a shared service and words for service and also um, in words of my sermon this week, we will begin that work again uh, now together. And we join together then in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Trinity is not something that is clearly spelled out to us in Scripture. It's a way that as people of God we have worked out uh, an understanding, a way to relate to how we experience God in the world. And so on this Sunday we see Scripture that um, connects us to God as creator, uh, God the Holy Spirit creating us in community, and of course God as our Redeemer and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our first lesson, then, is a reading from Genesis chapter 1 through the beginning of chapter 2. In the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters. Let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together God called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. 
God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures. Let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. And God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in the divine image. In the image of God, humankind was created. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that had been made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heaven and the earth were finished, and all their multitude And on the seventh day, God finished the work that had been done, and God rested on the seventh day from all the work that had been done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Now a reading from 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw Jesus, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Our confession of faith in a triune God leaves its stamp on this well-loved hymn and all throughout the language of our weekly worship. We begin with the greeting, the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And many of our prayers conclude with the words, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we offer and we receive blessings and we baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We declare in unison the words of the Apostles' Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. We believe in the Holy Spirit. Sunday after Sunday, we offer up our worship and our praise to our one God in three persons, the Blessed and Holy Trinity. It's a mystery of our faith that God chooses to make God's self known to us through these three distinct revelations, perfectly united in one true God. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday, when as a Christian church we particularly lift up and celebrate this wonderful mystery that is our God, our God the Creator, our God the Word made flesh, our God the Holy Spirit uniting us together. During the rest of the year we rely on, we trust in the mystery of the different ways God comes to us and reveals God's self to us. But today in this worship, this celebration, once a year we face the temptation to try to explain the Trinity, if that can even be done. So over the years you may have heard the Trinity compared to an apple or to a river or other metaphors that can be broken down into three parts. Now, our various faithful efforts in theology to explain the unexplainable can be helpful to a point. I mean, after all, we need a way to talk about and share with one another these things that are of deepest meaning in our lives. So we use these metaphors as a way to compare that which we know with something we struggle so hard to know. The only trouble is, while the lure of having what appears to be a neat and tidy explanation eventually can fool us into thinking we have a handle on God. Does describing the qualities of the peel and the fruit and the seeds of an apple help us to know what an apple tastes like? The only way to do that is to open up wide and take a bite. Does understanding the properties of water, the flow of currents, and the geography of the river help us to know what a river is like? The only way to know is to jump in and get wet. And so what if today, instead of trying to pull apart the Holy Trinity, what if we celebrate our triune God, whole and mysterious? What if we trustingly sink our teeth into the relationship of peel and fruit and seed and experience the wonder of that one sweet bite that is apple? What if we faithfully plunge into the relationship of water, current, riverbed, and experience that one wet, amazing sensation that is river? The key word here is relationship. 
the best way perhaps to struggle with talking about God as the Trinity is to talk about God in God's essence being about relationship. And so as we talk about the scriptures we hear today, as we dive into the word of God that has been uh, spoken to us, as we take a bite out of these scriptures, we can't help but hear relationship in all of it. Today's readings urge us to draw on our human experience to recall and perhaps even experience anew places, events, and people through which God, the mysterious three in one, comes to meet us, comes to be in relationship with us. So Genesis points us to that relationship of Holy Trinity in the story of creation. The triune God present and at work in the beginning and even now in the ongoing process of creation. The Holy Trinity is the image of all creation, the model for the way earth and all its creatures, including us, humankind, are interconnected. Although we were not present to see that first moment of creation, we are witnesses daily to the continuing results of God's incredible creative act. God reveals the mystery of the Holy Trinity and our interactions with nature. In the sight of a bird in flight, in the sound of crashing waves, in the fragrance of a delicate flower. God reveals the mystery of the Holy Trinity also in our own human existence. We are created to be in relationship with God, to be in relationship with one another, to also be in relationship with this earth. But sadly, our experiences also teach us the damage that is done when we forget that we and all of creation are patterned in that image of God to be united in relationship. In our here and now, COVID-19 and the killing of George Floyd make us painfully aware of our interrelatedness, aware of how what we do matters and how it ripples outward to affect the whole world, both for better or for worse. We might wonder at Genesis' bold claim that God pronounces humanity to be good when we know we are capable of doing such damage. But the abundant grace that we know from God in the person of Christ has been, is now, and will ever be present in the Holy Trinity. Our God, delighting in the work of creation, is the same God of grace that loves, forgives, and reconciles creation, making it possible to set right our relationships with earth and sea, with all creatures, and with one another, with all of humankind. The awakening and the awareness that is taking place across the world about the systemic racism experienced on a daily basis by people of color is an act of new creation, generating a new opportunity for change, creating a world that will celebrate the diversity of all creation and the abundance that was meant to be provided for all. This opportunity is God's grace a new chance to be part of making the world better, safer, more abundant for those who have been held down, held down by systems of power. And oh, how we need grace when we are in relationships. And we hear that today in words written by Paul to the church in 2 Corinthians. These words place our experience of the Holy Trinity right in the midst of our relationships within the fellowship of that faith community. Like most faith communities, the church in Corinth had its strengths and its struggles. Paul's letters to them were at times about encouraging their faith, but at other times, they were about directing them back on course. And sometimes, frankly, just to tell them to stop squabbling. Paul reminds the folks in the church in Corinth and us here and now at Gloria Day that our life together, our relationships to one another, are intimately connected to a relationship with the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. So putting things in order, mending division, listening to, and applying holy teaching to daily life, 
agreeing on and living by the basic truths of the faith, living together in peace. Paul's instructions to the church are a tall order. They're hardly an easy path, and yet it's possible. We've come to know the Holy Trinity, made accessible, tangible, visible to us through our experiences of life together in worship, in learning, and in serving others. In our day-to-day lives of faith, the Holy Trinity is our constant companion, providing love and grace and community to equip us in all the things we do. Now, as a community, we've not been gathering together in the midst of the pandemic, de- pandemic. And it's an ironic act of love and care. We protect one another as a group by staying apart. And in turn, we protect others in the larger community in that same way. So now it is our responsibility to begin to discern ways we will protect and care for our siblings of color. How will we take measures to be a community of faith that is actively and publicly living out what it means to be anti-racist. Perhaps we simply start by accepting that as a predominantly white group of people, we have a lot to learn. We begin by reading and becoming familiar with the vocabulary and the language of anti-racism and being willing to hear the stories of people whose experience is so greatly different from our own. Let us grow together in being disciples and followers of Jesus who take seriously the truth that we need to dig deeper in building community. Let us open ourselves to listen to what the experience of community has been like for people different from ourselves and how we need to be part of change for the better. Well, that then I think takes us to the heart of the command and the promise Jesus gives to the disciples and to us in Matthew 28. For this is all about relationship. Our God in the flesh has committed to a relationship with humankind on the most intimate of levels, living in the same flesh and blood and experiencing what it is to be in the struggles of life, to be loved by family and friends, to celebrate, to share meals, to pray for others, but also to be betrayed, to suffer, to hunger and thirst, to be treated unjustly by those in power and to die. But then, in the power of the relationship of the Holy Spirit, Jesus was raised out of death into life. And so it is after this resurrection that Jesus has gathered the disciples to hear his words of command and his words of promise. The commission to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and the promise to be with them always to the end of the age. These verses in Matthew are often called the Great Commission. And we often see great as meaning important. But sometimes the greatness or the importance of this command, it feels like an overwhelming responsibility. We feel inadequate to fulfill it. But what if we redefined that word great to be wonderful? And what in the work of the command at its heart to be about building relationships with people of all nations and pointing to the ultimate relationship of everyone being a child of God. Might we then begin to see the wonderful commission as joyful, life-changing, and exciting adventure? Just as the three persons of the Holy Trinity are inseparable, that great and wonderful commission cannot be separated from the great truly wonderful promise that holy trinity god with us with everyone always to the end of the age the wonderful promise spoken through the grace-filled voice of the triune god who died on the cross the wonderful promise spoken through the loving voice of the triune god that creates life from death in resurrection and the wonderful promise spoken through the reconciling voice of the triune God that brings many into one to form communities of faith, communities of hope, communities of love. We need not be burdened or overwhelmed by that command or that commission because the promise goes with us. 
that great, wonderful promise is imprinted on us, it's imprinted in us, in that invisible but permanent seal we have from baptism, the sign of the cross on our foreheads. And if that is true, then we have the opportunity to live out that wonderful commission every day with every person we meet, in every conversation, in every encounter. There's an invitation to live in love, to live in grace, and to build community. Our challenge as disciples, then, is to begin to see it, to be aware of it, and to grow in it. The triune God is present with us always in the stuff of life, in our own created existence. And the triune God is always as near as the hand that raises, well, not out anymore, but up in a sign of peace. And in the relationships we have built, the ones that we will build, and in the life of faith that we share. The triune God is always in all we do, as baptized, claimed, and sent disciples. The Holy Trinity is ever-present, inviting us to experience that revelation, to bite the apple, to jump in the river, and to be about the work of equitable, just, caring relationships. So gaze in awe and wonder. Fall to your knees in worship. Speak your doubts, stand in grace, invite and be open to relationship, and remember the promise always. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, with us to the end of the age. Amen. invite you now to join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed, confessing the faith we have in our triune God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge in the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered into the mystery of the Trinity, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, our pastors, and deacons as they lead the church in these trying times. With all the baptized, may they be strengthened to share the good news of Jesus Christ, and in prayer and action, strive for peace and justice in all the earth. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Instill in us a deeper wonder for the created world you've called good and a greater humility for our place within it. Kindle in us a creative and resilient spirit as we care for the earth and its creatures. Lord, in your mercy. Your God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Engage leaders to seek wisdom and respond with courage and compassion to those most in need. We pray for community leaders in this time of unrest. Further the work of advocates who, prefer, who pursue justice in often ignored communities. Lord, in your mercy. God of care, you created us in your image. We are your beloved children. May we recognize your likeness in one another. We pray for all who are mourning the death of your beloved child, George Floyd. Hold in your loving embrace all experiencing trauma, fear, uncertainty, and loss. Protect vulnerable children and adults from violence or neglect. 
and provide what is needed for those lacking access to food, shelter, and other services. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing, you accompany us in sickness and suffering. Bring relief to all afflicted with the coronavirus and all those isolated now more than ever, especially those in prison or in care facilities. Strengthen caregivers, health workers, and all whose work ensures the safety and well-being of others. Console, heal, and nourish all in need this day. Lord, in your mercy. God of connection, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways. Where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, bring repentance and reconciliation. Free us from the difficult work ahead in our congregations and communities. Open our hearts for attentive listening so that our places of connection are filled with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all times and the saints in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, uh, this is where we would uh, had our offering. So I use this opportunity to just say thank you once again for um, the ways you are faithful in giving back to God what was first God's. And now... I offer thanksgiving for the word. This is something new, but I, when I saw this resource, I felt like it was a good thing to have in place of where we would normally transition into communion. Um, it's thanksgiving for the word, which is now what is feeding us, the word of God by which we receive God's grace. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things you spoke light into darkness, you called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into, be into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and you call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. Now, if you'll join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, Holy God, we praise your name, verses 1 and 4.
forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to